friends, it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to day 19 of my 2020 holiday card series. Today I'm going to be making some gift tags using the Lawn Fawn Over the Mountain Borders and Tiny Christmas, as well as the Tag Your It dies. So I've stamped out my tags on some Nina Solar White cardstock with Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink. I'll be coloring it with my Copic markers. I'm going to grab a sheet of uh, scratch paper to tuck underneath so that I can color all the way to the outside edges. And for the sky, I'm going to use B21, B23, and B26. To start that saturation going and get the paper ready for blending, I'm just doing a quick layer of that B21 starting at the top of the snowy hillside and then flicking toward the top of the panel. And mainly I need it to really blend towards the uh, bottom of that sky, so I'm not worried about taking that all the way up just yet. I think that will be fine. Um, then I'm going to come in with that B23 and begin to add some mid-tone, just darkening things up and uh, getting that saturation increased further. And then I will come in with that B21 and blend out the edge of the B23 just by grabbing it and pulling it towards the top of the tag. And I decided I wanted my highlight shade to be a bit lighter and brighter. So I'm pulling in the B00 and this time I'm going to pull from the top edge and flick in a downward motion to meet the rest of the coloring. Then I come, come in with my darkest shade, the B26, and start to add that in on that uh, snow line again. And I'm just using the side of my marker when I'm doing this so that I can get a nice clean edge and not get any of that blue down in the snowy area, or at least try not to. And then I will repeat all of these steps. So I'm just going to continue blending out with the B23 and then the B21. And then at the end, I will bring in that B00 again. And this does take a little bit of time because you want to put enough layers on there that the markers blend and meld into each other. So because of that, I'm only going to be doing one of these tags on screen and then I'll do the other one off screen. So I'm moving on to my snow, and I'm sorry that I set that cap out of the screen, but it's that B00 again. I'm adding a little bit of a shadow line underneath the bottom of the two trees, and then also a little bit to the top edge of the snow. And now I'm ready to tackle those trees. So for those, I'm using G43, G46, and G29. If you've been watching my videos this holiday season, you've probably seen this combo a few times because it's one that I have just recently started using but have really been loving. I just think that the G29 complements the G46 and the G43 so nicely. So I started with the G29 at the top of each section blended down about uh, a third of the way with the G46, and then I'm filling in the bottom third with the G43, and that way you get a really nice dark rich green, but you also get that nice light highlight at the bottom. So I really, really love this combo, and I think it's the perfect Christmas green as well. It just really um, kind of gives you that Christmas tree feel. So I'm going to color the additional tree. And uh, while I'm doing that, I just wanted to mention that this is another set of tags for Tracy McNeely's 25 Days of Christmas Tags. I had one earlier in this series for Sunny Studio, and this one here is for Lawn Fawn. So if you haven't um, checked that out, I'll have a link to that post down below. And uh, make sure you do if you love Christmas tags because there's going to be so much inspiration and there's also lots of giveaways and all kinds of good stuff. 
So I'm moving on to the tree trunks. I used E27 and E29 for those. And there you can see my two tags completed. So now I just have the little accessory images. I have the little reindeer from the over the mountain borders. And then I also have the little Santa from Tiny Christmas. I'm using E23, E25, E27, and E29 for the reindeer. So I use the E27 as my darkest on his body, blending out with the E25. There's not a lot of room there, so I'm just being really careful to try to squeeze all of those shades in so that I get you know, a nice dynamic image and he doesn't look too flat. And I'm carefully going around his little white spots on his hindquarters as well. And then I'm going to fill in the rest of that area with the E23. Then I'll take the E29 and I'm going to use that to color in the little hooves and also the antlers. So I usually go with lighter colored antlers, but I just thought it would be uh, interesting to do darker colored ones this time. So that's what I went with. And then for his little face, I'm going to use E50 and E51. So I flicked in a little E51 from the uh, area towards his ear and then blended down on his face with the E50. I'm gonna use those shades for Santa's skin color as well, just to keep things nice and simple. And then for his suit, I'm using R24 and R29. I ended up just going with two shades since there's really not a lot of room there. And I accidentally colored in the area that should have been white. So I'm gonna try to push that out of there with my colorless blender. Red is pretty hard to get to move, but I'm just gonna do the best that I can and then go back and color the area that should have been red. So I use the R29 to lay in that shadow and then blending out with the R24. And I do think this gives me a nice Christmassy red. Um, I would have liked to throw in one more darker shade just for a little extra contrast, but he's so darn tiny and reds bleed out so much that I just decided to stick with the two shades to try to keep it safe. Um, I did go back over that white area with my colorless blender again, and then I'm going to color in all of those white areas with a little W1 and let that fade into white. And then um, I just have his little uh, boots and also his belt buckle, and I decided to do those with W7. And I could have given him black mittens as well, but I'd already colored them with the skin tone, so I just left it. So I'm going to trim these out with the matching dies and then I'm going to cut uh, two extra pieces of white cardstock to place on the back since the Copic coloring shows through. So this will just give me a bit more of a seamless look and cover up all of the coloring on the back. So I added just thin beads of glue with my Tomo Mono Multi, and then I'm adding these little backer pieces um, onto the tags. And you'll see later that I probably could have skipped this step, but um, I was kind of just uh, working with uh, things on a whim today, just kind of playing, and so I hadn't planned out what I'm going to do later. I hadn't planned to do that, but uh, you'll see what I mean. So I'm taking some pattern paper from the Let It Shine 6x6 pad. I wanted to do the whole reinforcers with this red and white stripe. And then the more I thought about it, the more I thought it would look really cute to have the pattern paper on the back of those tags. So that's what I meant. Um, I hadn't planned to use the pattern paper, but um, I just thought it would look really cute. So I decided to go with it. So I'm going to take out, there's two different sizes of hole reinforcers in that Tag Your It die set. I'm gonna use the larger one to die cut that red and white stripe. And then I also die cut the green stripe with that Tag Your It die. And again, I'm just gonna repeat this step and add that pattern paper to the back of the tag. So these tags are nice and sturdy, so it's actually not bad that I use that thin white uh, cardstock on the back as well, because it just made the tags um, really nice and firm. And so, uh, you know, if you wanted to reuse them over and over, and um, you know, you definitely could, just as long as you're 
giving them to the same person each year and you just collect them <laughs> before they get tossed in the trash on Christmas morning. And why not, you know? No shame. You put all this work into it, you might as well save them and use them a couple times. So I'm adding the, the whole reinforcers to the front and I just think that um, reminds me of a candy cane. So I thought it worked really well. And um, then I realized I was going to need to add something now to be able to stamp the to and from. So I was trying to decide if I wanted to add that and tie it into the hole, but it really didn't look right either on the front or back. So I decided to just glue them down on the back. So it gives me a little bit of white space there. I thought about covering the little hole there so you don't see the pattern paper showing through but I didn't really want anything bulky sticking on the back. Um, so I just decided to leave it for now, but I may end up like just punching something and covering that up later, I don't know. Um, but now I needed to stamp a sentiment, so I'm popping the tags into my Misty. I'm using Lawn Fawn Lobster Ink to stamp Happy Holidays, and that is from the For You Dear stamp set. So I did the happy holidays on the two fronts. I just uh, shifted that sentiment so that it fit in the best space on each of those since um, they each had a little bit of a different scene just by moving that long image around on the little panel. And then on the backs of the tags, I'm going to stamp those identical as well. And I'm using two more sentiments from the For You Dear and it is the don't peak until December 25th and then also the little to and love lines there at the bottom. So I just put those two together and I stamped that on the backs of both of the tags. I just decided to keep that part of the card um, identical to make it nice and easy, you know, for making. So now I'm ready to adhere my little images. So I'm just going to find the best placement on each of the tags. Like I mentioned, I shifted that long border die in the Misty when I was stamping it so that I would get a little bit of a different image on each of the tags. So um, one of them has four trees and one just has two. So on the first one, I kind of separated the little reindeer and Santa. And then on the second one, I'm going to put them together in that little clearing between the two trees. For my string, I decided to use this hemp cord from Lawn Fawn. This is the mistletoe lawn trimmings. So I just pulled off two links and made sure that they were the same. And I'm going to fold those in half, feed the center through the hole, and um, then pull the little strings through and tug them tightly to secure. So there is the first one and I'll just repeat that for the second one. And um, yeah, so right through from the front side and then pull that little loop up and feed the tails through that to the back and then give them a nice little tug there till they are nice and secure. And then I can just use that to tie them onto a ribbon or whatever I want to use to adhere them to my gifts. So to finish things off, I wanted to add a little bit of snow. So I'm doing that with a white gel pen. So I started with just the sky and I'm dotting it here and there and then sometimes making a little bit of a bigger dot so that it has a little bit of variation to it. And then once I have it in the background, I'm also going to put it over front of the images so that the snow can, you know, be falling all around and not just behind them because that would be weird. <laughs> Um, but I just like to do it like strategically because I don't want to cover up their eyes or any important features. So um, I just kind of pick and choose places where it's not going to um, kind of distract your eye from the actual images. So um, on Santa's hat and his outfit and on the Christmas trees and Rudolph's uh, darker parts. I didn't really put it on their faces because it just wouldn't show up that well against the lighter brown anyway. 
So um, once I had that laid in, I did decide to also add a little bit of stickles. So I'm going to add it to the top line of the snowbank and then also to the little shadows beneath the Christmas trees. And then I realized I needed some shadows beneath uh, Santa and Rudolph also or else it would kind of look weird so I'm going to go back to my B00 marker and just quickly do a little line underneath them and then add the stickles right over top so that it matches with the shadows beneath the trees. So that is going to complete my tags. I will lift them up to the camera so you can get a better look at all of that detail and give you another peek at the back as well. And I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button and subscribe and ring that notification bell so you always know when I post a new video. I post new ones every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and then occasional bonus videos like today. And if you're interested in any of the products that I used, you'll find those listed and linked below the video. And if you'd like to keep watching, here are a few videos from previous years of holiday card series that I thought you might also enjoy. I hope you all have an absolutely amazing day. Bye-bye.